Bay Giants in a bad way at least they were going into Monday night if they had the 03 Jason Schmidt it would be no problem but you see the 04 version not nearly as good 0 and 2 the ERA hovering around six and a half but Schmidt pretty good in this one dismisses Eddie Perez he struck out six in five innings work we're scoreless after two Barry Bonds up against Tarasio Ramirez watch this closely that's Bonds swinging and missing just his fifth strikeout of the year. Featherin Ramirez is capped. Still scoreless. And one of the great parts about the experience going to see a giant game, the ball dudes. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that. They're fun. Nobody really said they're nimble, but they are fun. First guy nearly falls down. Second guy almost lost the trousers. Obviously losing calories because he's never, losing his pants. Never a good thing. Third inning, Giants up 2-0. That's Pedro Feliz with a runner at second. Bloop to left. Edgardo Alfonso tries to score. Throw is a little high, and he is safe. Giants up 3-0. Now in the fifth, Giants up 3-2. Felipe Alou has said this week that Barry Bonds is getting tired of all the intentional passes, tired of getting pitched around, but there he is once again. 0 for 1 on the ninth. Three walks for him. He's still hitting 500. Bottom ninth, Matt Purgis on to close it out. Seventh save and eight chances, and the Giants win it 3 to 2. Well, the Braves playing that game and more to come without Chipper Jones, who landed on the 15 day disabled list Monday with a strained right hamstring. The move is retroactive to April 19th. It's also Chipper's first trip to the DL since 1996. This season, overall, Johnson is top of the ML lead in strikeouts with 32. Just ask Sammy Sosa about strikeouts. Top of the second, Moises Alou can't find it against Johnson. Then Aramis Ramirez, not a chance. Alex Gonzalez's turn, just swinging. Johnson striking out the side. To the third, Michael Barrett strikes out looking. Same inning, Jose Macias against Randy strikes out swinging. Same inning, Corey Patterson. No. Johnson, after three innings, struck out seven Cubs. Bottom four we go, Danny Batista in the box. Batista. Up the middle, extending his hitting streak to 18, a career high hitting streak for him and his tops in the majors. Same inning, Randy Johnson in the box. You can't miss him. He's the tall guy. An RBI single. So not only he's dominating on the mound, he contributes from the batter's box. 3 0. Corey Patterson now hits it. Foul ground. Chad Tracy playing in just his fifth major league game makes an incredible catch and hangs on. You need another look. This is painful to watch, especially for him. Two for four. He was also with two RBIs and a 400 foot double. Speaking of uh, deep, for the love of elevation, Richie Sexton. This ball traveled an estimated 503 feet. It smashed the scoreboard with Richie's own face in it, broke some lights, his 200th career homer, and it's the longest home run in Bank One Ballpark's history. Sammy Sosa against Johnson. Not a chance. Johnson, incredible. The Diamondbacks a win. Harold Reynolds, your third. Scott Ellerton 0 3 with an ERA over 11. Luis Castillo, that'll score Juan Pierre, who tripled to lead off this game, 1 0 Florida. Next batter, Miguel Cabrera, and just like that, a two run home run, 3 0 Marlins, Cabrera's seventh of the year. And two batters later, he sopped Choi against Ellerton, and somebody better call the fire marshal. Choi's sixth of the year, it's 4 0 Marlins. Three batters later, Alex Gonzalez, he just wants to chip in and does so. Gonzalez, his first home run of the year, two for four in this game. The two RBIs, six nothing in the first. Bottom three, Vinny Castilla, 10 straight games now with an RBI. Can he go 11? The ground to third, not there. Bottom eight, Carl Pavano facing Royce Clayton, who was one for four. He could add two hits if it wasn't for this great play by Alex Gonzalez. It's a top play nominee. Bottom nine, Castilla again to extend that streak. Nope, he finished 0 for 3. But were the Rockies done? Still bottom nine, two on. Charles Johnson, the tying run at the plate, facing Armando Benitez, who brings out his best in April. Tenth save and tenth chances. The Marlins now 13 and 6, best in franchise history. After three whole games in Montreal, the Expos hit the West Coast for seven, starting in San Diego. That does not mean they hit on the West Coast. Not so good with the bats. Nine homers, 31 RBIs, 203 batting average. Jake Peavy gets Orlando Cabrera, nearly swings himself out of his shoes. Just about falls down. Easy O. It's early in the season. This guy, footwork a little, just a little better. Padre baseball, it's family fun. Top seven, one on, one out, same score. Levon Hernandez attempts the bunt. Scott Linebrink falls on his way to field the ball. Hernandez jumps over him. Ramon Hernandez picks it up. 
throws Levon out at first, and we've got a discussion because Levon thinks he's safe. Frank Robinson obviously thinks he's safe. Line break called for obstruction. Levon safe at first. Bruce Bochy, his turn to argue now. He's going to get the heave. Top seven. What's up with this guy? I have no idea. We've got more dancing, and now pitching for the Expos, number 50. You know, the NFL is Mr. Irrelevant. The Expos have Mr. Anonymous. Actually, it's Rigo Beltran with a runner on second. Beltran earns his stripes, or in this case, the last name. Gets Ramon Vasquez to end the inning. Bottom ninth, two all, man on second. Hero time for Miguel Ojeda. Off Luis Ayala. That'll drop. Jay Payton rounds third. He's going to come in and score the game winner. Padres win it 3-2. And now, there's a reason to dance. Not like that, though. Reds and Pirates, Sean Casey, a Pittsburgh native, up. Top of the first two outs, one on KC, no doubt. Third home run of the year, he's hitting 425. He leads the NL with 31 hits, and he scored three runs in this game. Two batters later, on an 0-2 count. Brian Vogel's song, uh-oh, hits Austin Kearns, and that left more than a mark. It's a broken okay, bone in his forearm. He's out indefinitely. As we flash back to Saturday, where this Ryan Friel got hit in the head, he would go down. We bring this up because that's Kearns' replacement. Right now, back to Monday, his first at-bat since really getting hit in the head, Friel. Impressive. It's a two-out triple, a run will score, three-nothing Cincinnati, and it's a great way to come back for Ryan Friel, who I'm sure was thinking about that. Bottom six, Craig Wilson. Oh, baby. Is there any doubt? His fifth of the year. He had three hits in this game, did Craig. Three two reds. But you know what? We ask, doesn't Wilson remind you of another powerful Pittsburgh player? Uh, yeah, as in Kevin Green. He could have lived. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cute. And so is that. Grown men playing with the pair. Sean Casey on the ground. Jose Castillo uh, overthrows. The inning continues. Would Adam Dunn take advantage? I ask this question for a reason because Dunn does. He doubles. Two would come in. Five to the final. Four hits for Jack Wilson. He's faced the Twins. Ted Lilly of Toronto looking to become the first starter other than Roy Halladay to win this year for the Jays. No score. Tory Hunter in the box. And Lilly, no problem. Eight Ks for the game for Ted Lilly. To the third we go. Top three. No score. Runner on third. It's Clark. It's a fly ball. Is this going to drop in? Yeah, it is. It's going to drop, and Orlando Hudson would score to make it 1-0 Toronto. Next batter, Frank Catalanato. Down the line it goes. Wow, big hit. It's a double. Clark would score to make it 2-0 Toronto. To the bottom of the third, Michael Kadir. Liner right to third. Eric Hinsky, great grab. Take another look. We've made this a top play nominee with good reason. Bottom nine, it's now 6-1 Toronto. Lily looking for the complete game effort, facing Doug Menkevich. Menkevich now pops one up, and that'll do it for Lily. Nine innings, incredible performance. His third career complete game in a 6-1 victory.